Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering a question from one of our YouTube subscribers. We wanted to know how to create a soft body Tetris animation. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member at cgshortcuts.com or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So let's start by modeling our Tetris blocks. I'll bring in a cube and make it 15 by 15 by 10 centimeters. Then we'll zoom in. And so we can edit the faces, we need to make our cube editable. So with it selected, we'll hit C on the keyboard to turn it into a polygon object. And from this, we'll create our shapes. So I'll make a few copies of our cube. We'll need one in the shape of an L, a T shape, a Z or Z, and an I shape. And finally, a box shape. So I'll hide these and start with the L. We'll switch to the polygon face tool and select the top face here. And if we hold down control and drag this up, we can extrude that face out. And holding shift as well will allow us to snap to increments. So I'll make this section 15 centimeters high as well. And we'll make another section like that. And we'll do the same out this way to create the L shape. So that's one down. Let's show the next one, which is going to be the T shape. So we'll bring this up 15 centimeters, then this out 15 centimeters, and same over here to create the T shape. Then we'll move on to the Z, which goes up here, out this way, and out this way. Then we'll do the I, which is super easy, just three extrusions upward like so. And finally, our box shape, we'll bring this up one, and both of these faces can come out here. So let's show all of these now, and switch back to object mode. Because we modeled all of these from a cube, they've all adopted the axis point from the original cube, which is here. But I actually wanna move the axis to the bottom left of each object, so we can easily line them up later. So I'll grab all of these, and hit Shift C to bring up the commander. And I wanna grab the axis center tool. Then to move the axis to the bottom left of each object, we need to shift it along the Y and X direction. So we'll slide this fully to the left and same with the Y axis. And hit execute. And now each object will pivot from the bottom left. And that's going to allow us to grab one and holding Shift, snap it into place along those increments as well which should make organizing these blocks nice and easy. Let's hit N and B to show the lines. And so we can see each shape a bit easier. I'll we'll bring in a null, put them all inside there, and add a bevel deformer. And now each object has a beveled edge, which makes seeing the outline a bit easier. And it also makes them look a bit more interesting as well. I might also turn on the fong break down here as well to make the beveled edge look a bit nicer as well. So now holding shift again, we can easily slot these into place next to each other. So using just these six shapes, I'm going to copy and arrange these in an interesting way to build a completed Tetris puzzle. And we wanna build a rectangular final shape like you would get in Tetris. So I'll just go ahead and position and rotate these around to get something interesting. So feel free to copy me or make your own design. And now that we've got those stacked up to build our final shape, I now wanna make the individual blocks dynamic so they can fall down and rebuild our final puzzle shape. So first we need a container roughly this shape to catch all the pieces. So I'll bring in another cube, make it editable and set it to X-ray mode so we can see through it. And I'll just reshape the polygon faces to be nice and close to our final rectangular shape. So something like that should be fine. I'll then delete this top face to create a hole for our blocks to drop down into. And I'll move this down below everything. We'll also need to reverse the normals of our container so our dynamic collision will work correctly. So I'll select all the faces, right click and reverse normals. So let's make these dynamic. Let's grab this box shape here, which is at the top of our list and the first object I'd like to drop down into our container. So to do that, we'll add a cloth tag, 
from the new Cloth Dynamics engine in Cinema 4D 2023 and above. And Sarah Container catches the object as it falls down with gravity. Let's first rename this. Then we'll give that a collider tag. And in the tag, I'll set the bounce to zero to stop our blocks bouncing all over the place. And we'll hit play to see what that gives us. It's definitely not bouncing, but it does look a bit rigid at the moment. So let's see if we can make it look a bit softer. So we'll rewind this and take a look at the cloth tag. I'll remove the bendiness so that it keeps its shape and we'll increase the stretchiness for a more soft body kind of look. And I'll also decrease the friction so the blocks can slide over each other a bit more and bring the mass up to 10 to make them a bit heavier. And try that. Still not quite as squishy as I'd like, so we might actually need to subdivide our objects so they can deform a bit better. So let's rewind this. And we'll just try this on our box shape first. We'll hit Shift C again and subdivide this. And we can see some extra options if we click here. Let's try two levels of subdivision. And now that block has quite a few more polygons. So hopefully if we play this, it behaves a bit more like a soft body. Cool. So I'll grab the other blocks and run a subdivide on those as well. And at this point, our bevel is being applied as a deformer. So it's not affecting the simulation. So we might wanna bake that into the shapes as well. So if I right click on the null and choose current state to object, it creates a copy of the null and applies that bevel to the mesh of each object individually. So we'll use those for the simulation instead, so we can delete the old ones. But for some reason, some of the objects have been put into their own nulls. But we can get rid of those by filtering our objects by polygons. And if we double click this, it'll select all the polygon objects in our scene and not the null objects. And if we close this, I'll deselect the container and I'll drag all the selected objects to the top of our list, which pulls them out of any nulls they might be inside. And we can just delete all the nulls that we don't need. So we're left with just our blocks, which are subdivided and beveled like so. So let's continue working on our dynamics. I think it drops to the floor and bounces around a bit too fast. So if I hit Control D to bring up the scene simulation settings, we'll try increasing the sub steps for a more accurate simulation. And we'll improve the collisions as well by increasing the collision passes and under scene, to slow things down, I find lowering the time scale can make things look a bit smoother. So I'll drop that down to 0.5 and try that. Okay, I'm liking how that's dropping now. So let's increase our timeline and we'll have our next block fall down. So when this first block hits the ground, about there, that's when I want the next block to fall which will make this L shape. So I'll click that to find it in our list and drag that up below our first object and copy the cloth tag to that. And if we go to the basic tab, to have the dynamics kick in on our current frame to send this dropping down as well, we can keyframe the enable setting of the cloth tag. So I'll set a keyframe with it enabled on this frame, then go back a frame and set another keyframe with it disabled. So we're basically just switching the tag on as soon as the first object hits the floor. So let's see what that looks like. All right. So from here, it's just a matter of applying the tags one by one to have the blocks fall down one after the other to rebuild our wall of shapes. So let's play this again and do the next one. So when the second block hits the floor, that's when we want the third block, which will be this one here to start falling. So I'll move that next in line in our list and copy the tag from the previous block onto there. And we just need to move the keyframed activation to our current frame instead. So now if we play this, we get our first three shapes falling into place. But we just need to make sure they finish in the correct position and orientation. So it can be a bit of trial and error to make sure each piece lands correctly. So we might need to tweak this guy a bit. So let's rewind this. And I might rotate this block around and see if we can get it to settle on the right angle. So piece one and two drop down 
and this time it almost flips onto the right angle. So let's try again. I think if I just move this over a tad and try that, hopefully it'll bounce all the way over. Perfect. So now these three blocks match the original position from our grid. So we just need to do the same for all the objects and try to make it look as interesting as we can. So we'll rewind and I'll just do a few more pieces just to make sure this makes sense. Let's do this Z shape next. So I'll move that next in the list and hit play. And we want this to activate just as block three hits the ground, about there. So we'll copy the tag to that and move the activation keyframes to about frame 99 and play that. Okay, so that's activated at the right time, but I don't want it to fall further than the other blocks and have a slightly faster velocity. So we need it to start at the same height. So let's go back to the start and just shift this down in line with the first three blocks. And we wanna make sure we do this with all the remaining blocks as we go as well. Otherwise the higher blocks will travel further and move faster. So we'll play that. And the first three pieces work perfectly still, but we might need to tweak block four's starting position so it slots into here. So we'll rewind and I'll just try moving that over slightly and see if this is going to work. And that's better. So we just need to go through each piece one at a time, adding the tags and making sure they land in the correct position. And you don't necessarily have to pre-build your block and have all the pieces match up with that. You could do it more freestyle if you like, but I found it a bit easier to do it this way. So I'll go ahead and do the whole thing and we'll come back when it's done. So now that I've gone through all the remaining blocks and added all the tags and also made sure they all fall from the same height, I've then given each block a different color and we now get something like this. So that's pretty much it for creating a soft body Tetris animation. You can download the project files at the link below. And if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a like or a comment as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all of our premium C4D training and resources. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com or visit us on Patreon. So that's it from us this year. Don't forget to check out our Christmas sale that's on until Sunday and all the best for the holiday season. Have fun with the tutorial and I'll catch you in 2024.